Morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jimmy Hester. We're at the 75th Diamond Anniversary of the Dyer County Fair. We have Mr. Stephen Maupin with us today with uh, Tennessee Soybean, and we have Matt Fennell with Tennessee Farm Bureau. They volunteered their time today to come and help us uh, on this uh, good Labor Day weekend, and I'm going to let them say just a few words. Uh, yeah, well, thank you, Jimmy. And I think it's important for everyone to realize that fairs kind of have a, an, an ancient history, and it's to celebrate the harvest. And we're glad we're going to be celebrating a, a bountiful harvest this year for the rest of the world, more particularly soybeans. Of course, that's what I'm interested in, but Dyer County has a rich legacy in soybeans. So it's just a great time to be here. It's a great time to be a part of this legacy, 75 years. And uh, we just want everyone to understand how important the crop is, how important soybeans are to, uh, to the everyday food and fiber needs. Thank you. Okay, uh, you say a few words. Sure, Jimmy. Like Stephen said, it's exciting to be here celebrating 75 years with the Dyer County Fair. And what I feel like is probably one of the strongest, if not the biggest, agricultural fair in our region here in West Tennessee. You see here crops already coming in today. This building will be full by the end of the day of, of crops of all kinds that have been grown right here in Dyer County. So fairs go back a long ways, but for 75 years in Dyer County at least, farmers and children and adults alike have been bringing in things that they raised on their farms back home to showcase to the rest of the county. Thank you. Okay, to my right here, we've got a 3010 John Deere tractor owned by Mr. Russell and Kay Falk from Hornbeak, Tennessee. We also have Mr. Tom Davis and Mr. Tommy Davison, and they're gonna tell us a little about the uh, Shade Tree Tractor Club and we have a international here behind us that belongs to Mr. Tom and Miss Libby, okay? Mr. Tom, tell them a few things about your tractor and what the Shade Tree uh, Tractor Club does for the community. Well, I brought two, well, two in here. We've got six down here so far, and uh, we enjoy it, and it's a good thing for you know, kids and all to be a part of, and we really enjoy it. And. Uh, Well, this year we have plow days and harvest days all at the same time. It will be October the 15th out here on 1578 Bethlehem Road. Everybody that wants to see these tractors run, come on out because we enjoy having you. And I think you'll have a big time. Come on out and pick cotton. We'll have some cotton sacks out there for you. Well, when I was little, I think my grandmother made me one out of a bed, a, p a pillowcase. I didn't pick much, but uh, I was out there, you know, getting getting the experience. I'd like to say something about this 3010 here. It's a little unusual that it's an LP. And it's uh, a standard. And it's, uh, most LPs that I had seen uh, had a bulging tank in the front, and this is, the 3010 was the only model that was made that had it receded under the uh, hood like a normal gas or, or diesel. I have a 1964 4020 that's power shift, and it don't look nothing like that, but it's a workhorse. We're still using it every day on the farm. We're going to step back here now to this uh, I-4, and uh, Mr. Tom's going to give us a little history on it. I just bought this one back in the spring. A fella uh, passed away, and he had three nice tractors, and I bought all of them, and I bought it just like it looks. and and. Uh, he done a real job restoring it. And he was from up in Benton, Kentucky, where I got it from. And it's real nice. We got some nice ones down here. You know, well, it's, we, I think we got 24 here the Tractor Club has this, this year. Okay, what, what exactly, if I wanted to join the Shade Tree Tractor Club, what, what would I have to do? What? See my wife, she's come to the meeting. Thursday of every month, and we eat, and you can join the club, and you'll you'll meet a lot of super people. It's hard to believe the tractors that we used then and the technology we went to today. Now, when you have a flat on one, you got to put it on a, you got to have a technician to tell you what stopped it. And I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing, but one of these you could get your hammer and screwdriver and baling wire and fix it. Yeah, we, work, we work on these 
Oh, I know you do. You restore it yourself. Uh, I wish Miss Libby was here. I've heard she does all the work. She uh, does the hard work. I'll give her that. <laughs> okay. These tractors that you're looking at here are what they call standard or Wheatland models. They wasn't used around here very much. They came from Kansas, Nebraska, and all. That's where they were shipped to. Uh, my dad, like I say, bought a 64, and uh, it was a power shift, and all of his buddies got some. They went with the standard shift, and uh, we still got ours, and they've, they done traded up to bigger and better, but we've, we've got it. Uh, okay, we're go thank you, gentlemen. I'm going to move around, and, and we're going to touch base with some more uh, folks. Here is Miss Libby, if she would like to say a word. Uh, come on up here, Miss Libby. We've been bragging on you that you're the one that actually does all the work. And runs the club. This is Miss Libby. Hey, I did this in 17. I said I wasn't going to do it again. Well, <laughs> I'm just glad you're here. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we, we thank you for bringing the tractors and look forward to it every year. They try to bring us. They always come through when we need something. And they're, they're real uh, assets of the fair. We've got Nate and Kyle Brock with us today. They're the third generation of people here at the fair. Their granddaddy, Tommy Reed. Their mom, LaDonna Brock Spry was uh, active, and uh, they've come on and followed a tradition. Today they are uh, judging uh, the soybean crop, and T Dyer County is the number one soy producing county in the state, and that's something to be proud of. Uh, Nate, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit what you're doing. Well, what we're doing here, we're judging the soybeans as they come in, uh, just looking at pod counts and any disease or anything like that on them, and just kind of judging them from there. Okay. Uh, Kyle, what do you think about this year's bean crop? I know y'all raise a lot of soybeans. You farm all around me down there. Uh, we've got some timely rains, and I think it will help. We, we'd have liked to have them a little earlier, but uh, tell us what you think about it. Well, it's true. Just like you said, Jimmy, we got off to a dry start this year, but we caught some timely rains along the way, and our neck of the woods, western Dyer County, I'll say things look fairly good. We've had some later rains to fill the pods out, and help the beans mature and just what we need. I think we're, for the most part, sitting on top of a very good soybean crop. I, I think so too. Okay, thank y'all gentlemen for your time today and uh, maybe we'll get a few more entries in. Thank you. Okay, I've got Reed Hester here with me. He's my son. He's a second generation to be here at the Dyer County Fair and I'm proud that we're carrying on this uh, tradition. Uh, he's gonna tell you a little about the corn entries today. Okay, you can either enter three, <clears throat> three years in one entry or you can enter Three stalks, three ears on a stalk. That's another lot, but it's going pretty good so far today. Okay, we got Jenny Pate Hollingsworth with us today. She's the daughter of Jerry Pate Hollingsworth, a longtime supporter and director of the Dyer County Fair, and she's here carrying on the tradition. Uh, we also have Jack Pritchett with us, and he is entering crops. He's in the fifth grade at Finley school and he uh, he's here helping today. Uh, Jack, would you like to say a few words? Um, I just like to be be here and enter some crops and I like to see all the other crops around me and that's all. Thank you Jack. We sure appreciate all the students help. Okay, Jenny Pate here. Uh, her daughter's going to be bringing some crops in later, and that and also will be a third generation uh, person here in Dyer County. We've got a lot of tradition here for this 75th anniversary of the Dyer County Fair. Okay, we've got uh, Carl Schultz with us today, local farmer, fair board director. Uh, he's also the Dyer County Farm Bureau uh, president. He's going to say a few words about, uh, about our crops, and uh, we're just going to have a little open discussion here. Carl, you can say anything you'd like. Well, it's good to be here today, another Dyer County Fair. It's something that we look forward to all year. Um, Dyer County, I guess there's good and there's bad all over the county as far as crops. Um, hopefully our soybeans will pull most of us out, but I know certainly the corn uh, is some looks pretty bad in places, but Lord willing, we'll all turn out okay. Um, we've got uh, Terrell Davis with us here today. He's uh, our new county agent with uh, UTIA and it's it's important so important to us and not just the farmers but Dyer County in general for this support and and that UT gives us in this area um, they've done a great job in the past 
they look forward to the future. They're looking to do different things for us, and uh, certainly um, we hope to have a good working relationship, and I know we will with the uh, UTIA. So we'll hand it over to Terrell Davis. Okay, Terrell, like I say, this is your first time here in, uh, in to be part of the Dyer County Fair, but we're going to make it part of the job description. So here's Terrell Davis tell you a little bit about his background. Absolutely. So uh, I come to Dyer County from southwest Arkansas, and, and row crops are uh, something that's a little bit new to me. Beef and forage has kind of been my forte in the past, but I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. Uh, I tell a lot of people the, the biggest difference that I've seen so far is the amount of support that I've gotten, and it means a lot. Uh, when you're an extension agent and you're in a county that values extension and farmers that uh, want the information that you provide, that means a lot. And uh, these guys know that we're all about the research-based information, and that's where I go from, and, and education is my part. So I am learning some uh, on-the-job skills uh, in row crops, but I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. Uh, very impressed so far with the Dyer County Fair and the amount of community members who have come out and checked in things this morning. And, and as an agent, it kind of gives me a, a little bit of a guide on see where our crops are at uh, and, and meet some farmers. So it's been a really good day here this morning uh, at the Dyer County Fair and uh, so glad to be here and the support that we've gotten. Thank you, Terrell. We have Kent Green here with us today. He is a local farmer. He's on the board of directors here, and he is also the president of the 75th Diamond Anniversary of the Dyer County Fair. Uh, these young ladies and men that you see in front of us are volunteers. They help us each year enter the crops. Uh, they're 4-H, FFA students from the local schools, and we could not do it without them. The thing of the Dyer County Fair is, is the good volunteers and we get from the whole community and support from everyone. Kent's going to say just a few words here uh, as president. Thank you, Mr. Jimmy. As you can see today, we're entering crops here in the Sam Reed building. If, uh, if you've got anything you want to enter, we'll be taking them till 1 o'clock. Please bring them out and we'll be glad to take them and exhibit what you bring us. Thank you, Kent. Uh, like I say, we're, we're excited this year being the 75th Diamond Anniversary. I've been here about 30 years uh, as uh, with affiliated with the fair, and it just gets better and better every year. Hopefully I'm here at a 100th anniversary of it. 